Why are carp such a problem to Australia? Well, they're not just a problem in Australia, they're actually a problem all around the world. So um, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature ranked common carp among the eight most significant vertebrate fish species in the world. In Australia, the main reason that they're such a big problem is just because there's so many of them. They make up 80% uh, of the fish biomass, that's the weight of fish, in our biggest river system, the Murray-Darling Basin, and up to 93% in some places, which is astronomical. The reason why they, uh, there's so many of them is because they are incredibly resilient. So they can handle extremes in dissolved oxygen, in temperature, in salinity, um, in turbidity. So those whiskers that you see on a carp, the barbels, they're actually covered in thousands of little taste buds. They're just like one giant tongue. And so they can move through the water in really low visibility and be very effective in feeding, much more so than our native fish because they're actually not that evolved to very turbid waters because our, our big rivers aren't naturally very turbid. Um, so carp have taken advantage of the fact that Back in the 1970s, when they really started to take off, we'd had multiple decades of just treating our rivers poorly, pulling out snags to improve navigation, installing dams to increase water security, which is important. But what it really did is change flowing habitat into a series of disconnected pools. Now, a lot of our natives love flowing habitat, so that was lost and in its place was still habitat which carp love. Really what we did is create a perfect environment for carp and they've exploded as a result. So what measures have we got presently that, to manage this? So since the 1970s um, when carp really took off, uh, we've been investing as a nation millions of dollars um, on a range of techniques to try and get the carp problem under control. So um, using traps to try and uh, catch carp, using sex pheromones to increase the effectiveness of those traps, commercial fishing to try and target carp. Uh, we've tried uh, installing screens to exclude carp from wetland habitats that they really like and they like to spawn in. Um, even modifying water levels in wetlands so that we can in, um, encourage carp into the wetlands and then drain them so that they, they basically strand and die. Um, using things like Judas carp where you put a radio transmitter in a carp and let it go so it'll swim back to its school and then you can target the school. So daughterless carp is another thing so um, developing a genetic um, tool if you like so that uh, carp only give birth to male offspring so over time you change the sex ratio and so the reproductive potential of the population so millions and millions of dollars spent over decades but the thing is there's this thing called the sustainable rivers audit which is essentially a health check for the Murray-Darling Basin and the data collected under that audit shows that over the last decade carp populations have quadrupled so whilst we've been investing all that effort in all those different measures, the problem's been getting worse. Which, I guess to summarise, we need to do things differently. What we've been doing hasn't been working. And that's why biological control is such an exciting um, potential for carp control.